Hey there everyone, this is Edward at iHeart 3D Printing and today I'm just doing a follow up, keep my channel fresh. Like I said, I'm looking for subscribers. At the time of this video I have 525, so if at any point you want to keep or just want to help a guy out who's helped you maybe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But let's begin. I'm building a go-kart for my daughter and that's her like four years ago. And I got some plans from Spider Carts. And just wanted to show uh, some tips and tricks how to get good angles for the spider cart or what I used because there's a lot of angle cuts and they're not so easy to just do. So I'm going to do a quick rundown and then show you uh, the progress of the spider cart. So here's a spider cart I've been working on and I'm about to get the uprights done. So as you can see there's angles here, there's angles here, there's a few angles here and here. And this has a lot of angles and you can see how my camera lady, you can see the joints are pretty tight and see very, a lot of tightness. I'm not an expert welder and if you're watching this video, neither are you. So that's probably a good thing that I always believe that when amateurs exchange advice, they understand each other. So, cause we usually have the same skills and same tools and uh, would like to know the same shortcuts. To make these these cuts the way they are, you have to set your 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 fence right here. Come here, camera lady. You have to set your fence right here. And what you're going to need to do, I know where the other piece is at. I cut several of these uh, two by fours right here to get precision. And then when the blade comes down, you butt it up there. You twist your saw fence to get the right position and then you lock it in place using this. So you're asking yourself, where do you get this dimension? And that's, come over here, camera lady. You take a standard miter saw. That's what happens when you're not prepared. Take your miter saw. Camera lady, can you come up here? You see these? Some of them have detents, so 15 detents, 22 and a half. These are actually pretty common also on the uh, spider cart. Um, there's like a lot of 30s, so for that you'll lock it in place with that. And then you'll take your cuts. Be sure to mark them, this is 22 and a half. So make your cut and then go over to your uh, chop saw and then set up the angles. The second thing you can do to use it, oh, I dropped my safety glasses. I don't want those to get banged up. Use these angles as a, a reference check for certain, I don't have it ready right now to do it, but you can use these as a, like a standoff or a guide to hold certain pieces in place. You clamp it, you get your angle right, however it goes down, and then you're able to get a lot more precise angles. <clears throat> Now, self-explanatory, the second thing I like to do is take my measurements. Now, your, your instinct would probably be to try and measure. I just got over a cold, by the way, so I sound congested. It's because I am and winded. So you take your measurements, and you're, you're probably likely to make marks. But I kind of like cutting things precise. I use a razor blade to take my measurements. I use calipers. I get really precise. So this should be, I think, two and a quarter or two and three quarter. I put it right here. And then there was another one that was eight and a half inches. On the plans, there's eight and a half inches. So you put that in place. You weld this. You get this in place. And these two are here. And then at a certain point, <coughs> when you're trying to get the gas pedal anchors in because they go in the same spot. I think what happens also this I put them snug so they when they weld they kind of twist a little bit and then it gets real tight. You can use this right here to find different locations so to keep things straight and then clamp everything down and tack weld or whatever so it becomes a datum and a reference to get your to get your cuts butt tight to get your angles very exact 
Also, the iPhone, and I'll try to do some B-roll, but the iPhone has a uh, built-in angle finder. Um, <clears throat> so when I first started this, I'd cut a piece of steel, an angle, and then hold my phone up to it, zero it out, hold my phone up to the steel to find the angle, how well it was cut on the saw, and then adjust. It takes forever. It's a lot of cuts. You're better off just going to the miter saw, which already has everything ready to go and uh, getting your angles that way. So between finding the, the spacers that help you find dimensions and the angles to help you find angles for your saw and then angles to weld to, it could really make welding up a spider card or any project way easier. I got these strong hand magnets. Each one of these I think at the time when I bought it was like 200 plus dollars. These have been so cool, so beneficial. Downside, stainless steel, aluminum, you're not gonna get a lot of use out of them for obvious reasons. I mean, you can get really creative in how you position these and get holds that you didn't think normally were possible. This is a Blanchard ground plate. It has been milled on the top. You can see the mill marks to a certain precision. So it gives me a flat surface to work off of. Um, but I did start this on the ground on concrete. So you can start on concrete and still get a very flat surface, um, which I did. But as soon as you can get it off the ground and start working, you put your, your plate to work, put your magnets to work, get your angles. This is a complex weld that's about to happen. And even though the saw did do a perfect 25 degree cut, it's 25 degrees, it's kind of hard to balance. A little bit of play goes a long way. So I did use the iPhone to get 25 degrees by zeroing out here and then putting the iPhone at an angle right there. And I took my headset off and my lavalier and all that. So I'm about to weld this. And you can see I use a two by four. 18 inches is the gap between these two posts. Welded it there, I welded it there already. 18 inches, so I go to the saw and I cut an 18 inch 2x4. And then I use a clamp right here to pull it tight. And it doesn't really move these struts, it just holds this 2x4 flush. See that? It holds it flush. And I set this, because this wants to fall off. This is a real hard weld. This is super hard. We'll give it a different angle. So it's, it's, it's hard, it doesn't want to stay on there, and I don't have any help. So I got my measurements, I think I, I measured the, the even spacing on this side and this side. It's like 1 and 5 eighths, if I recall. I use calipers and I split the difference and I get it right. And then I clamp to the piece of wood. So there's a lot of clamping going on. Uh oh, here's the kid. Oh, cool. So, I use 2x4s as spacers. 2x4s are pretty cheap, $6 right now. You know, they used to be $2, I understand that, but it's a small price to pay to have things that will hold tension and get these dimensions right. So, okay, guys. Granddaddy Spider Cart from Spider Carts. Take care. Bye-bye.